Well, hello there, strugglers. I don't know why I thought that would be cool. <laughs> I had a lot of fun last time I did this and I wanted to do it again. And now here we are. What a beautiful world we live in. If you missed the first video, I'll get you up to speed on what's going on. I'm kind of a legend at guessing how shows and movies are gonna end. Like for example, if somebody were to turn on the movie Angels in the Outfield in the same room as yours truly, you better believe I'm predicting the ending within a couple of minutes. There are gonna be angels in that dang outfield, okay? I just know it. So I'm harnessing this talent of mine and turning it into content. <laughs> I'm gonna check out two TV shows that I have never seen and watch only the first episode. Then I will predict how the entire series will end just based on things I pick up during that episode. Noticing cliches and anticipating twists, pinpointing character traits, anything that will help me pull every bit of information out of this thing. So the first show I'll be covering today is the highly acclaimed animated show, Avatar The Last Airbender. And my buddy Mike Lusso will join me after that and grade me on how well I guessed. And then the second show I'm gonna be covering is the smash hit, Pretty Little Liars. With a little help from everybody's favorite heartthrob and also definitely probably not a serial killer, Dylan is in trouble. Pretty cool, huh? All right, so now that we're up to speed, we will dive into Avatar. I found the Avatar, as well as his hiding place. Hmm. I kind of want to watch this whole thing. <laughs> when this is all over, I might revisit this and actually actually watch the show. <laughs> as hard as you may find this to believe, I have never seen this show. I didn't have cable as a kid, Yada, 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 you've heard the story a thousand times. But I have only ever heard amazing things about it, so I'm very excited to check it out. The intro sequence explains a lot, actually. So there are these four groups of people, okay? Fire, air, water, earth. And it talks about how the Avatar would keep balance among everybody until those pesky fire guys showed up and ruined everything. That all changed when the Fire Nation attacked. The waterbenders and the earthbenders were gonna team up and take down the firebenders, and the airbenders are freaking gone, man. They're dead. There are these two siblings from the water tribe, or Water Nation, I'm not sure the correct way to, just don't get mad at me, please. Their names are Katara and Sokka. They're pretty important. Protagonists, if you will. Katara is a waterbender herself, really the last of her kind, at least in the South Pole where they live. And apparently the rest of the squad is up north, hanging out with Tim Allen. Katara and Sokka stumble across this little man stuck in an iceberg. Really spooky looking fella. He bursts out of there and tells them that he's actually an airbender. But I thought they were all dead is what an idiot would say. Did you even read the title of the show? Use context clues, for goodness sake. Aang is his name, and he's acting kind of suspicious about his past. Having weird dreams and stuff, you know? Aang, wake up! <gasps> hey guys, I think Aang might be the Avatar. They eventually figure out that he's been frozen in that iceberg for over a hundred years, and I thought winters in North Dakota were long. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you. Like, comment, and subscribe, all right. Oh, we haven't even talked about the Fire Nation yet. Hold on. This angsty little punk, Zuko, is on a mission to find the Avatar. And according to Zuko's uncle, Zuko's father and grandfather and great-grandfather before him have all been searching for the Avatar as well, with no luck. The uncle is super chill, by the way, way more so than any of the other Fire Nation people, especially Zuko. That guy is a bit of a hothead. So the Fire Nation is alerted to the Avatar being back after all these years finally, and they want to get rid of him because, you know, he brings peace and balance and all that stuff, and they want to win the war. Winning the war is pretty important to these guys. It's a whole thing, and really, that's kind of where it ends. Not a whole lot to go off of here, huh? So I got through this episode, and then I realized it was only 20 minutes long. I don't know why I was expecting it to be longer, they didn't cover all that much in this. So guesses are gonna be a little bit tough. Um, although I am, you know, I, I'm built different, so we'll, we'll see. All right, first off, let's get the easy ones out of the way. Aang is the avatar, so he's gonna learn how to bend air, water, earth, and fire by the time this is over. Duh. Another one that's pretty obvious, Katara. She's a waterbender. She's gonna end up, you know, training at the North Pole, probably, because they hinted at that. And she's just gonna be like, She's gonna be next level. She's gonna be elite. And also, I, I'm not exactly sure why I think this. I think Sokka is gonna learn how to be an earthbender. Along the way, they're journeying and Aang has to learn how to be an earthbender. So they're gonna meet with the, like the tribe. And while they're there, Sokka's gonna be like, wait a second, I'm kind of, I'm kind of good at this stuff. He's gonna be doing that thing where you're like, boosh, boosh. You know what I'm talking about? I don't know. I think he's just gonna be a natural. He'll pick up on it. And then they'll have three of the four. You know, they can form a little gang and fight against the Fire Nation. It's just kind of clean that way. Speaking of the Fire Nation, Hot take. I don't think Zuko is the final boss. I don't think he's the real bad guy here. In the first episode, they kind of make him seem like he's like, 
really low ranking. Like maybe he's in charge of some soldiers or like a boat, but he's like way down on the on the rankings. My assumption is that there's somebody at the top, right? Like some some general or whatever, the leader of the Fire Nation, and that guy doesn't trust Zuko because he's freaking nuts. So I think that because he's not trusted by anybody, Zuko is gonna kind of go rogue a little bit and try to kill Aang by himself at some point. But before he gets a chance to do that, I think his chill ass uncle is gonna stop him. It'll be like this epic moment where the uncle is like, no Zuko, don't do it. And maybe like dives in front of Aang or some, some kind of like show of heroics and Zuko is gonna accidentally kill his uncle. You know what, actually, no, not a he's gonna purposely kill his uncle. Nobody stands in my way. I'm on a mission. I'm gonna kill the Avatar. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Kill the uncle. So then after that happens, Zuko's gonna have to go into exile. Like he's gonna be banished from the Fire Nation. They're like, what the hell? You killed your uncle. What, you're crazy, what are you doing? So he'll disappear for a while, but then he'll come back just crazed out of his mind, okay? And he's gonna take on Aang 1v1. And then he's gonna get his ass kicked, right? <laughs> Obviously. But I think all of this will teach him that him and Aang aren't actually enemies. Like, why, why would they be enemies? There's no reason for that. And then I think he's gonna be the one that teaches Aang how to firebend. Huh? What do you think about that? If this isn't how the show goes, this is how the show should have gone. Okay, let's go back and let's retcon this. It'll be Aang, the airbender. Katara, the waterbender. Sokka, the new earthbender, right? He learned that along the way. And then Zuko, the firebender. They got all four of them and they're gonna go into battle. I think they'll like form a little army and they'll take on the real bad guys. And I don't even necessarily think the real bad guys are the Fire Nation. I think it's gonna be somebody else, some other like unknown enemies that we haven't heard about yet. Maybe they're like cosmic benders, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Space benders, like Doctor Strange, something like that. So there you go. Those are my guesses for the show. I think, honestly, I like what I have come up with. I like the show that I've created, but it doesn't matter what I think or what I like. All that matters is what actually happened. So now let's check in with my good buddy, Mike, and see how good my guesses were. All right, we've got Mike here. Everybody welcome Mike. Nice, warm welcome. Thank you for joining me. So first one you have is Aang is going to learn how to bend air, water, fire, and earth by the end, obviously. Of course. Okay. okay. So yeah, that that is correct. That's kind of obvious, right? Uh, yeah, I, I don't feel too good about that one. You know, uh, that seemed like, of course, that was going to happen. That's kind of the point. He is the avatar, I assume. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think it's a little safe guess. Okay, all right, okay. <laughs> um, second one. Katara will go to the North Pole and learn how to bend water like a freaking beast. That's true. That is that that is correct. <laughs> okay. That that also felt like a little bit of a safer guess because it was kind of mentioned in the first episode, but she uh she does go to the North Pole. Uh she gets trained there and she becomes, you know, she's BA. Not just because she goes to the North Pole, like just their travels and their adventure, like she becomes like there's other bending skills I won't I won't spoil for you that she learns that kind of makes her OP more than just the four that they talk about yeah because there's like offshoot bending I don't know if you guessed that no, <laughs> no, no absolutely not so it's kind of like the in-between so you have air, fire water earth air and then you have like uh -huh. the in-between uh bending oh like mud a little bit of mud bending uh it's a pretty dark episode too when she like learns that skill it's a pretty dark episode. really yeah. was she like bending people's bones and stuff Close. <laughs> oh, yeah, That's a go. really close guess. Katara, what kind of, what does she bend? Water. Okay. Blood? She's sucking their blood out, dude? Uh, I mean, not sucking their blood, but she's blood bending. Wait, this is a Nickelodeon show. Is she like blowing people's brains out? <laughs> I mean, I will go, she's, she, it's like she controls their body. It's a little bit of the dark side. No, yeah, it's, yeah, it's for sure dark side. I don't know why, but I think Sokka is going to become an earthbender somehow. He'll pick up on it while Aang is training. So that is incorrect. A uh, shoot, really? <laughs> yeah, Sokka is not a bender. He has no bending skills. Uh, so is it something that you gotta be born with? You can't just learn yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, it's uh. like, it's not like you just train to do it. You have to have an affinity for it to begin with. The midichlorians. <laughs> Basic, don't, don't say that word. People hate that word. <laughs> really? <laughs> I'm sorry, is it a slur? Yeah, that's a whole, don't get me started on Star Wars. That's a whole nother. Don't even bring it up around Mike. He doesn't want to talk about it, okay? <laughs> I don't think Zuko is the final boss. He's too low ranking. He'll eventually become a more important leader for the Fire Nation, but the real top ranking guy will never fully trust him. I'm talking about like the whole, they got the Fire Nation, right? And he's on like a naval ship or something at the beginning. So he's a little bit of a low, of a low guy, right? But there's gotta be someone to big baddie at the top 
at the top of the Fire Nation that's in charge. And they're like, Zuko, I don't trust you. You know, God, something like that. This it's, it's like half true. He does become a more important leader of the Fire Nation, but like way in the future, like after the show ends. But he is, he's not the final boss. That's correct. He's not the final okay. boss. They really want me to think that he's the, he's the guy. He is the guy. But he's not that guy. You're not that guy, pal. Trust me. You're not that guy. Zuko's uncle will try to stop him from trying to kill Aang, and Zuko will end up killing his uncle. Huh. What do you think about that? <laughs> so, half true. Half? Which half? <laughs> Which half? Uncle Iroh does stop Zuko from killing Aang, more in like an indirect way, because he's a mentor to Zuko. He's more like a father figure. So oh, it's not sure. like he literally like jumps in front of Aang or like, you know, stops uh, a fight. No, Zuko, don't do it. It's more like uh -huh. he, he, you'll see watching the show, he get a lot of life lessons. He's that mentor figure, but he, Zuko does not kill his uncle. He could never. Man, I was so convinced. I, I was like, they build it up, build it up, build it up. Like, you know, they're so sweet together. Oh, they've really formed a good bond. And then it's just like, no, I have a mission. I have to kill the Avatar, and if you're gonna stand in my way, then he ooh, scorches him. Yeah, that doesn't happen. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> Zuko will disappear into exile and eventually try to take on Aang by himself and get his ass kicked. Zuko's already in exile. There's a reason why he's in exile, and there's a reason why capturing the Avatar is so important to him. But he gets his butt kicked severely, not just by Aang, but like Katara, him and Katara go at it. The newbie kicks his butt. It's like it's like a little bit of uh, The Force Awakens or whatever that movie was. Yeah, <laughs> Kylo Kylo and Rey. Yeah, it's like Kylo and Rey, 1v1. That's actually very similar. That's actually very similar. He'll realize they're not really enemies and that the war is pointless and Zuko will be the one to teach Aang how to firebend. Come on. This one's gotta be true. It's gotta be. How confident are you in this? I'm like a 10 out of 10. You're 10 out 100%. of 10. You're you're so confident in this guess. Well, you're absolutely correct. Let's go. <laughs> I'm, I'm elite. I mean, it's next level. I mean, I can't be touched. Zuko joins the game. I, I want to give you credit because I don't want to say it's an easy guess. I want to give you credit for that. That, that. That's a good guess. That's a good guess. I appreciate that, Mike. That means the world to me. Last one. Zuko, Aang, Katara, and Sokka will form an army of all the nations and take on some unknown baddies that we haven't heard about yet. Yeah, that's pretty much true. It's pretty much true. I wouldn't say that they themselves formed the army, but everyone does kind of come together. You have to see the, the last episode, it's like a movie. Nice, uh, dude, I can't wait. I'm so excited to see this. Like last time I said, I think I might actually go back and watch How I Met Your Mother because it was interesting to talk about it. And then I just never did. But this one, I actually am, cross my heart, hope to die. I'm gonna watch this show. If you were to give me a grade, a letter grade A through F on my predictions, what would you say? Generously, A minus. Holy smokes, man, let's go. Objectively, probably like a B plus, but I, I give it A minus. I would even lovingly accept a B plus. That's great. And I love the generosity, very much so appreciate it. I think the only thing people in the comments might say is that the guesses arguably could be like, they're like simple, easy guesses. Yeah, a few of them were very, I, th I think, pretty predictable and it's not like they were meant to be big twists yeah you know? i was just kind of following where they were meant to go everybody round of applause for mr mike thank you for joining me today thank you so yeah we'll jump into pretty little liars now i'm still here bitches and i know everything hey okay now tell me why i'm legitimately invested in this. What's going on here? <laughs> Remember when I said Avatar didn't give me much to go off of? This one gave way too much, my head hurts. I'm gonna try my best to condense this episode into as short of a recap as possible, here we go. So there are these five friends, okay? Aria, Emily, Spencer, Hannah, and Allison. One day, Allison mysteriously goes missing. And honestly, everyone's acting kinda weird about it. Where's Allie? We don't know. Allie? She's gone. I've looked everywhere for her. Look, I heard her scream. Hey guys, I think she might've had something to do with it. We fast forward one full year and a lot has changed within the friend group, mainly that none of them are friends anymore, probably on account of one of them dying. But the real drama begins when the girls start getting these weird messages from somebody simply titled a. So let's catch up on what the girls are like now, okay? Hannah is naughty. She has turned into a dang kleptomaniac, stealing for fun like a delinquent. Her message that she gets from A says, be careful, Hannah, I hear prison food makes you fat. 
rude. Emily is secretly into girls, okay? And now she's getting real close with the new girl who moved in to Allison's old house. Is this your boyfriend? His name's Justin. He's also 3,000 miles away. My boyfriend's name is Ben. He's a swimmer, like me. I bet you're good. You totally have the body. You're not gonna like kiss me now, are you? <laughs> so the message that Emily gets reads, I've been replaced. You found another friend to kiss. Ooh. Scandalous. Spencer is dealing with her rude sister moving back home and her sister's boyfriend is clearly trying to smush. You wouldn't happen to have a towel, would you? Ren? Who are you talking to? No one. What do you think, I'm fucking stupid? I heard you talking to someone. Oh no, never mind. She just takes that at face value and she believes that he was just talking to no one. Okay. Excuse me, sir. This is a 16 year old. You're trying to smush your girlfriend's 16 year old sister. How dare you? Absolutely how dare you? The message that Spencer gets says, poor Spencer always wants Melissa's boyfriends, but remember if you kiss, I tell. Well, I don't think that's your secret to tell, is it, A? Apparently this has happened before with a past boyfriend as well. Spencer's got a little bit of a track record. You need to tell your sister. Tell me what? Nothing. What do you think, I'm fucking stupid? Oh no, never mind. And finally, the most shocking scenario of all is Aria. So she's hanging out at some bar, you know, just chilling as minors tend to do. And she bumps into this guy, okay? This fully grown adult man. He tells her that he's an English teacher and then they hook up in the bathroom. Okay, wait, what? Hold on, what's going on? Okay, I'm sorry. Aria is a 16 year old girl and this man is an adult man who is an adult and a 25 year old fully grown adult man. What, what the f <laughs> But don't worry. Uh, it gets worse. Turns out he's not just some English teacher. He's Aria's English teacher. Holy crap. You're under arrest, Nimrod. When I first met you, I thought, who is this girl? God, who is this little girl? <laughs> So naturally, Arya's message that she gets from A says, maybe he fools around with students all of the time. A lot of teachers do, just ask your dad. And that brings up absolutely no questions, definitely not cryptic at all. Oh, okay, so Arya's dad was having an affair before they moved away. Coming back here brings up a lot of memories, you okay? Dad, I'm still keeping your secret. I love you, Arya, and you know that I love your mom. Do you? I made a mistake. I did, I forgot to mention that Arya's family moved away after Allison went missing and then they just moved back like right now, a year later for some reason. Why did they move away in the first place? Uh, probably on account of the dad having sex with another woman. So the friends are all kind of skeptical about Allison actually being dead, which is understandable because they think that she's the one that's sending them all these weird messages. A is the name. A is what Allison starts with. Did you pick up on that? We all know she's dead, right? Oh God, they, okay, they found her body. They found Allison's dead body. She's a guy, it's a dead body and they found it. All right, I guess that's settled then. Was she a friend of yours? Do you care? I don't know what I feel worse about having to stay away from you or being a jerk about. How romantic. I'm really broken up about your good friend being found murdered yesterday, but I really want to bang. Oops, <laughs> it looks like I just accidentally dropped my copy of Pennsylvania's Age of Consent Laws. 16 is the legal age, but what? Aren't you 16? And we're in Pennsylvania, that's crazy. So weird, like what a coincidence. Anyway, sorry about your friend. And then the entire episode ends with the friends leaving Allison's funeral and they all get yet another text. And this one says, I'm still here bitches and I know everything. I'm sure you do, sweetheart. So this show threw so much at me in the first episode. There's, there's a ton that I didn't even talk about. You want to be here all day? I don't. It just feels like it could go in so many different directions. This is, it's going to be so much harder to guess. Okay, first off, let's get this one out of the way. A is not Allison. All right, Allison is dead. They wanted kids to go to school the next day and be like, oh my gosh, did you see uh, Pretty Little Liars? Do you think it's Allison? Allison starts with an A. Do, do we think, we all think it's Allison, right? But I've got a bigger brain than that. It's not Alice. I also think the show wanted us to speculate that A stood for anonymous, maybe. 
I got a bigger brain than that, guys. I think A stands for like actually somebody else's real initial. Uh, and I think it's a dude. And I think that this A person was good friends with Allison uh, before she died. But that's how they know all of the friends' secrets, right? Because Allison told them all their, their dirty little secrets. My next prediction, that teacher, that son of a bitch, he's gonna end up dead. And he's kind of a creep. So I... So you know how I mentioned that Hannah is a bit of a klepto? Well, she got busted by the cops and uh, the detective that caught her, at the end of the episode, he's kind of mysterious of the friend group again. You know, he's like, I think one of you might've had something to do with Allison dying. And I think that detective is also gonna turn up dead. Everyone's dying up in this bitch. No one's making it out alive. What am I doing? What is this? <laughs> now let me come back around to Allison. I think the reason that she died and the person that killed her uh, was A, actually. Allison was maybe gonna expose something that A had done. They kind of led us to believe that Allison was like that. Like, she was kind of a snitch. She wanted to expose stuff. She was not a good friend, you know? Maybe this new A is, uh, is trying to throw people off the scent. And that's why they're texting all these weird things like, I'm gonna expose you. Because they want them to think that it's, that it's Allison. Why is there a fire truck back there? And you know what else? I think Arya's dad is in on the whole dang thing. He's scared that his wife and everybody else is gonna find out about this affair that he was having. And he's trying to scare maybe his family into wanting to move away again. You know what, this town isn't very safe. The, the town's sketch, dude, we gotta go, we gotta get out of here. There was a character that was briefly introduced and they kept hinting at it like, we don't want anyone to find out about the Jenna thing. You don't think she'd ever talk about- The Jenna thing? If you say one word to my sister about Ian, I will tell everyone the truth about the Jenna thing. Do you think he knows about- No. no how could he? And it looks like maybe they blinded Jenna somehow. Oh my God. It's Jenna. Awful, right? Wrong. I don't think that has anything to do with the story. I think it's a red herring. And finally, my last prediction is about Emily. Since the show is kind of telling us, okay, Emily is closeted. Emily's into girls, right? But they also mentioned that she has a boyfriend. My boyfriend's name is Ben. He's a swimmer. I think that that boyfriend is gonna find out that she is like hooking up with this other girl. And I think it's gonna get violent. I think he's gonna slap her or something. And I think that maybe he's gonna, maybe not end up dead, but I think he will get the crap kicked out of him in some way or another. Also, Spencer is probably gay too. All right, lots of predictions, uh, kind of all over the place, not a lot of structure to it. Let's check in with Dylan uh, and see what the heck, what the heck I got right. So I'll just quickly be like, ah, oh, Dylan's here. So. <laughs> All right, everybody, give a warm welcome to Dylan. Good to see you. Thank you for joining me. Thanks for being my self-proclaimed expert. Uh, let me just preface this by saying Dylan has been very adamant about knowing every single thing there is to know about this show. Yeah, like literally from A to Z, uh, bring, bring out any questions, I can answer them all. This is the face of a liar. <laughs> okay, no. I feel like I should just quickly explain. Dylan is not actually an expert on Pretty Little Liars. He has a series on his channel where he watches the first and last episode of a show. And Pretty Little Liars was one of the shows he covered. So while he doesn't know every single thing that happened throughout the entire series, he does know how it ends. But to also help us fill in the gaps, I do have an actual expert on standby in Taryn. She sent me an email with <laughs> some information about the show. So any of the parts that me and Dylan are a little bit confused on, She's here to help us out. I don't see any guess here about who A actually is. Oh. Kind of just seems like you're shooting in the dark here. Okay, well, this is, and this is why. Because A, in my brain, is somebody that hasn't been introduced yet. So I didn't want to say, oh, it's it's Josh, you know, something like that. But I do think it's somebody that we have not met. And it's, it's also definitely not Allison, which is like the girl that they're kind of alluding to it being. No freaking way that it's her. Because I do think she actually is dead. Allison's alive. No, you Okay, but how though? Because did they not find her body? Was it a body double? That's what I thought too. But then when I when I flipped from the pilot to the final episode, they're just like Allison's alive. So, so somewhere in there, they Stranger Things did, and it was actually somebody else's body. Here comes Taryn to the rescue. Re Allison being alive and the body they found in her backyard. This does actually end up being a different girl. However, the police identify the body wrong twice. Oh no! And the first two girls are both alive. The police work in Rosewood is rough. <laughs> to say the least, huh? Allison is, I think, a good person. She gets a happy ending. She marries one of the friends. She marries Emily. Yes, Emily. They get married, final episode. I said something, oh no, I didn't say something about that. I, I said that I thought Spencer was gonna end up also being 
a lesbian. So I was completely wrong about Allison actually being dead. I don't blame you because, yeah, they, they clearly said, like, we found her corpse. So you'd yeah. be like, I don't know how you would find the corpse and then also her be alive. Right. And then also, I my brain was like, oh, the twist in the show is going to be that she's alive. But then th I think, no, 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 the writers are too smart to actually have that be the twist. So they're going to twist the twist, you know? Well, that's a little too obvious, right? Because Allison starts with an A and there's A, right? It's not Allison. Uh, at least, okay, okay, let me, let me just clarify here. From what I've learned from, from my YouTube's comment section, um, after only seeing the first and last episode, A is, is numerous people throughout the series, huh. so we're not gonna have one singular A. However, I can talk very confidently about the final A, who I think is probably the best A out of all the A's. I'm a little bit, uh, surprised that you didn't pick up on it, because it's all right there in the, uh, the first episode. It's actually Spencer... Her twin sister, who they were separated at birth, and uh, she lives in Britain. Twin sister, they were separated at birth, and uh, she lives in Britain. Well, how, it's, it's, it literally was laid out in front of me, and I missed all of it. I don't know. As soon as I watched the first episode, I was like, there's an evil twin somewhere in this world. I, it just seems like natural progression. Not evil twin sister, who's British, right? Yeah, like, yeah. It just it's seems like, like, the, like It's like the um, that Vanessa Hudgens Christmas movie. Do you know what I'm referring to? Oh, uh, yeah. Of course. <laughs> like I made commentaries for those. So, you remember uh, Ren from the first episode? The creepy massage guy? The boyfriend. The boyfriend, right? And then he has a little thing with Spencer, who... So, he's another predator. We're just, you know, bringing yeah. in a bunch of predators in the Show. What is the deal? What's that all about? At some point, he has a relationship with uh, Spencer, and then he goes back to Britain, and then he runs into Spencer, who, who he thinks is Spencer. Mm. But it's the twin. Oh. And he's like, Spencer. And she's like, I'm no Spencer. I'm a different person called Playwright. <laughs> you know, that's when the twin finds out about Spencer. So she does a little research on Spencer and on her twin, and she's like, oh, that looks like a really solid friend group. I think I should become a part of that friend group. That's what she says to herself. What's the best way to get into a friend group? You murder your way into it, right? Murder your way in, blackmail everybody, creepy cryptic text, me text messages, yeah, right. that sort of thing. I think we all have been there. So yeah, that's what, that's what her intention is. She's just gonna replace her twin sister and uh, she gets caught. It's actually kind of romantic if you think about it, but she uh, she murders Ren and then she takes his uh, his bones and his ashes and she makes it into a little diamond necklace that she wears around with her. Oh, that's so sweet of her to do. The reason the twin gets found out is because Jenna, she's got the power of the smell. So she she can smell a bitch from a mile away. That's her line. <laughs> that's the wrong bitch right there. And then they're like, I don't think Jenna, she, just don't, she don't smell right. I'm telling you. <laughs> According to Taryn, Jenna also doesn't end up being blind. What? <laughs> so she's just... Faking it, huh? That's what Dylan kind of thought she was faking it too. These people are crazy. The people of Pennsylvania are crazy. You think the detective and the creepy teacher turn up dead? 100%. I see that in your notes here. Absolutely, yep. We can talk about the creepy teacher a little bit if you want to talk about him. Sure, yeah, let's talk about him. Turns out, uh, he's not all he says he is. You know how he got, like has that running with with the girl where she's in the bar, and it's supposed to be like they don't know each other. Mm -hmm. Turns out he does know who she is, and in fact, he's writing a book about the missing girl. Yeah, oh, we, oh, hold on, wait, yeah, I'm just connecting that. So he knew that she was a, a teenage girl. Yep, he knew she was a minor and he said, uh, all systems ago. <laughs> oh no, so t does he turn up dead then? He turns, listen to me, he turns up and he, in the final episode, marries the students. Are you gotta be kidding me, dude? The final episode, <laughs> he gets married to the students that he knew she, she was a minor. Is he even a teacher? I mean, are we have we asked? Have we looked into that? He taught me a lesson or two. I'm telling you that much. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to make the worst joke, dog. Uh, I was, I was gonna say, and oh. that, that's just like, <laughs> no. that's just like, no, 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 no. Arya's dad is in on it. He's afraid that his wife will find out about the affair and wants to scare everyone into moving away again. I don't, I. I don't think that's true. Dang it, I, dude. <laughs> Come on. I no, I can't say for sure. But that dude, just from the pilot, he had no backbone. I don't know. I think I kind of sucked this whole thing. I sucked. Listen, there was, there was a lot that went on in this in this show. Mm. Uh, as someone who's seen two episodes, I can say <laughs> that uh, I think it's like a CW show. It's all just chaos and you need more A's. You need more drama. Things get resolved and now you need a new... K 
character, a new predator, a new, you know, there's just- <laughs> Taryn steps in here with some pretty good information. She said, as some fun lore, the writers slash creator were reacting to fan theories in real time and adjusting the plot lines to prove fans wrong, ending up with this glorious nightmare of a show. Yeah, that I'll say. What an interesting way to go about it. Just like changing things because of fan theories online. I'm sure other shows have done that too, but I-, I uh, pretty fun. One last thing I wanted to ask about, I don't know if you never saw this happen probably, but maybe somebody told you about it in the comments. Did Emily ever have a violent altercation with her swimmer boyfriend when he found out that she was a lesbian? Who's Emily? Emily had a boyfriend? <laughs> While Emily doesn't have an altercation with her swimmer boyfriend when he finds out she's a lesbian, the first time we're introduced to her girlfriend on the show, she tries to drown Emily in the school pool. So you were close enough on that one. <laughs> All right. A lot of crazy violence in this show. I love it. You love to see it. Based on these guesses that I made, I don't have very high expectations for this, but if you were to give me a letter grade, A through F, where do you think I fall in there? Oh, fall the fall. And don't, don't go easy on me. I give you a solid, uh... D minus? That's fair. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know, that's I'm, more than fair. You 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 predicted that um uh I'm sure I'm sure there was a prediction in so, here that there was, was something right. in there. Uh, I remember there was something in there. You got the names of the characters right, huh? I did, that's yeah. something. There you go. And so we've come to the end of yet another flawless video. <laughs> Thank you to Mike and to Dylan for helping me out with this one. I might do this again in the future. I don't know. If you have any shows that you think would be good for me to cover or any guests that you would like to come on, let me know in the comments. And a quick extra thank you to my patrons. Those listed here are in the top tier. You guys, let's catch a flick sometime. Let's, let's just go to a movie. Right here, this person. We can sit next to each other. We might even share a popcorn, who knows. All right, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I will talk to you again very soon. Goodbye. I want to read some nice comments saying good job. That was a great video. Just one more little shout out. Taryn said that Mike's Mike has a great breakdown of the entire show. So if anybody's interested in Pretty Little Liars, Mike's Mike. My avatar expert's name was Mike, and the Pretty Little Liars expert is also Mike. What's up with that? I feel like I'm surrounded.